Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is where we speak about different programming languages and tools for developers. If you want to learn a new language and want to pick up some IT skills, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Today I'm going to walk you through the installation and setup of Jupyter Notebook. Now, if you don't know what Jupyter is, then it's a simple interactive environment for working with Python interactively. You can write out the code with some explanation with simple text. It's used widely in data science and research where we not only want to run some code but also want to explain the theory behind the code by using Markdown language. Now Markdown is totally separate marking language and I have a separate tutorial that is linked in the top right corner if you want to know more about Markdown. So let's see a sample Jupyter Notebook. I open up a sample Jupyter Notebook with bunch of text, diagrams and code. You can see that you can not only write the code, but you can also include some text explaining the results. You can also include some references using hyperlinks. Now the cool thing about Jupyter is that you can play with them interactively. They are kind of live books for Python. So let's see them live in action. Let's open jupyter.org slash try and you will come across this web interface. Now you can use Jupyter across different programming languages to learn them interactively. But we will try Jupyter Lab, which is a improved version of IPython. Click on this try Jupyter button that will actually launch a container and will set up and start the Jupyter server. Once it's launched, you will be presented with this interactive notebook. In this notebook, you can see mathematical equations, code, some text explaining the logic and then there are few images as well. All these are actually interactive. You can modify them and test out your changes. Now if you come down to this cell and change average to let's say AVG and run this cell again, it will become AVG in the diagram. So these are really fun way to learn Python interactively in bite-sized pieces. You can make simple changes and see the change in effect right away. Let's see how you can install Jupyter Notebook. Head over to jupyter.org. Now you will see a couple of options here. You can see there is Jupyter Lab and there is Notebook. We are going to use notebook in this tutorial so click on install the notebook scroll a little bit and you will see getting started with classic jupyter notebook even though now we have jupyter lab which is improved version most of the installations and setups still work with classic jupyter notebooks in this section you can see how you can install it using anaconda command prompt now it is recommended to use Anaconda distribution especially if you are working in data science or data analytics because it comes with lots of other packages that you don't have to worry about installing individually. But in this brief tutorial I'm going to use pip and install Jupyter alone without some extra packages. First of all let's create empty directory named Jupyter. Let's go inside this directory. To install using pip just run pip install notebook and you may have to use sudo if you are using Mac or Linux. Once the download has finished you can open Jupyter notebook by just typing Jupyter notebook and hit enter. It will start the notebook server and it will open up that specific folder in this Jupyter interface. Now to create a new notebook, 
click on the new on the top right corner select the kernel you want to use and you have your new notebook here I have Python 3 as my kernel but you can also have Python 2 or you can even have Scala with some extra plugins that will launch your notebook. Now to go through simple walkthrough of the interface you can click on help, click user interface tool and it will take you further as you perform suggested actions. By default the created file will be named untitled. Let's rename it to Jupyter Tutorial. Now I'm going to press escape to exit this door. This top bar is called menu bar and below it we have notebook toolbar. When you start a notebook it's in command mode and you can see it if you hover over this area. It will give you a tooltip showing that it is in command mode. These rectangle boxes are called cell. Once you go inside the cell, you can type here and you will see that more changes to edit mode with this pencil icon. Also, you will see that the color changes to green in the edit mode. To go back to command mode, you can hit escape or click outside the box. Now this cell is for writing code. You can see it above here in this code drop down menu. To make it markdown you can simply click on this drop down and select markdown. We will try that little later. Now in code cell you can write simple python code here. So let's add simple piece of code. Let's write print hello world and once you have written some code you can execute this code. In the notebook menu bar click on cell, click run cells and it will execute the selected cell. You can also select run cells and select below. That will execute the selected cell and insert a cell below it if it doesn't exist. If the cell below this cell was already existing then it will simply select the next cell without inserting any new cell. There is also shortcut for this using shift enter keys. So if you see me executing code automatically I am simply pressing shift and enter keys together. If we get back and click run cells and insert below that will run the cell and create a new cell regardless of whether there was another cell already below this or not. There are also options to run all cells, run all cells below and above if there are some pieces of code which take too long time and you want to skip those executions and run only the selected ones which are below this cell. You can make those selections with these buttons. Now these core cells work like interactive python cell. Even if you don't type print here, it will still print hello world when you execute this cell. These line numbers represent execution order in Jupyter Notebook. So for example, if I create a variable name and assign it the value of John, and if I try to print its value, it's printing John. Now if I change the name variable to Jenny and if I try to run the cell above, you will see that the Jenny value is printed even though the line above assigns the value of John to it. But if you check these line numbers, then you will get the order of execution. Usually they will be in the correct order from top to bottom but if you come across such notebook during your exploration then make sure to see these numbers. We can also add some markdown into our notebook. To do so let's add a cell above our python code. With first cell selected 
click insert insert cell above and that will create a new cell by default it will insert core cell to change it to markdown cell click cell cell type and click markdown and that will change it to markdown cell I'm going to copy some markdown code in this cell once I hit shift enter it will be passed as HTML I'm not going to go over what markdown is if you want to learn more about it I will link a video in the description below and you can check out more about markdown and how to write markdown this notebook is started with python 3 kernel so any code you write will be interpreted by python interpreter but you can also run cell commands by using exclamation mark and then typing cell command you want to execute so if i type ls it will give me the same result as if i typed this command in terminal we can also use magix in cell so it has single person sign magix which are command magix and will run for the specific line in which we have person sign and we also have double person sign magix which will make this specific cell to be executed using that magic now let's go over some magics available inside Jupyter notebook to list all the available magics we can use the magic function percent ls magic and it will list all the magic functions available now we can try out some of the commands to see how they work so if i type percent pwd it will show the working directory and if i type percent ls it will list the contents of the directory i can also add other options or flags for the cell commands so if i type ls dash la it will list all the files and folders in their long listing form so we can see when they are created their users and group associated with those files now we can also have double person sign html command and that will make this cell a html cell you can type any html code you want in this cell and it will be passed as html you can for example embed videos in here using html snippets of code so I'm going to copy a code to a link of one of my YouTube videos and that will embed YouTube video in this notebook. You can also run bash commands using bash magic function. There is also matplotlib function which will allow you to create interactive charts inside the notebook but I'm not going to go through that. There is time it magic which allows you to run a piece of code and time its execution. You can see how long it takes to execute that specific piece of code. If you have other language interpreters installed, you can also run other magics like Ruby or JavaScript. You can save this file in HTML, Markdown, PDF and many other formats. To save the file in HTML, click on file download as and select the format you want to save it as let's save this file as html once it's downloaded let's open it you can see it has nice syntax highlighting and you can set it on your blog or website there is also possibility to create beautiful looking HTML slide source using Jupyter Notebook and I will create a separate video tutorial for that. For that you need to install some extra plugins. Now for some reason if you are executing complicated piece of code and if your interpreter gets stuck you can always restart your kernel by clicking on kernel and then click restart. 
when it's executing you can see that python 3 circle is filled and when it's idle the python 3 circle is hollow so that way you will know that python 3 interpreter is busy and it's probably executing very long running execution code there are a few shortcuts you should learn in order to become productive with Jupyter Notebooks and I use them quite often. First, to change a code to Markdown cell, just press M. To change it back to Core cell, hit Y key. To insert a cell above, you have to press A. And if you want to insert a cell below this Core cell, then you can just press B key. And as I spoke about it earlier on, to execute the selected cell, just press Shift Enter key. If you want to learn more about Jupyter Notebook, just search on the internet or GitHub and you will find many interesting notebooks created by other developers. One of the interesting resource is this link where you can find lots of notebooks to help you learn and get started with Python and Jupyter Notebooks. And to actually learn them, you can just go to edit mode in this notebook and just see the code they have written for making it look like this. You can find this link in the description below. I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Now, if you have any question, Ask them in the comment section below and I will try to answer as many as I can. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anyone for whom it may be useful and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get more content on programming. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.